Yahweh judges. Yahweh Allahayim. Okay? That's how you would say it in the Hebrew. Go ahead. Unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Yep. Now, like I was saying two weeks ago, the Heavenly Father and His Son used uh, slang talk. So he compared the people, which the serpent was Esau, Edom, so you can understand the date. Okay, that same spirit is in the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. He using uh, slang talk right there. He comparing the people to uh, animals. So Esau is the lowest of all the nations on the earth. Go ahead, bro. And above every beast of the field. Go ahead. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Esau gonna be in a low state, in a, in a, in a confused state, like they was in the cage, man. Like they was in the carcass's mouth, man. And like I mentioned, that guy, Johannes Blumenbach, man. Okay, they German, man. Okay? Go ahead. So, they called them Caucasian, man, which means cave dweller. Job 30. Read that. Go ahead. This is uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So, the woman is what? Talking about the children of Israel. Okay? That's what that's going into. Go ahead. And between thy seed and her seed. So, with, within the nation of Israel, okay, you got who comes out of the nation of Israel? Yahweh Shah. Okay. Go ahead. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, the one who is going to pull down Esau for you to understand is Yahweh Shai, man. That's the one that's going to pull down Esau. That's the one that's going to crush Esau. That's the one that's going to pull Esau out of his power seat. Now, if you don't believe me, okay, all you got to do is look up the word bruise there in the blue letter and it'll tell you it's talking about who the world in the called Jesus. Okay? Which it would say uh, Christ, but in the Hebrew it's a Mashiach, which means anointed. Christ means anointed. So that's what it would say there in the blue letter. Okay? So it's saying who the world in the recall Jesus is the one that's going to bruise the serpent heel. And he comes out of what? And who? The nation of Israel. I mean, he comes out of who? The nation of Israel. See that? So like I said, matter of fact, go to it, bro. Matter of fact, but Jake, Jake, uh, Harhead. So you gotta, you gotta show Jake, man, cause Jake, what? How you get, how you get that out of there? Where you get that from? You know what I'm saying? Just run their mouth instead of looking up the word, man. So that's why you gotta look it up, man. Just show it to him. He ain't even gotta read it, bro. So when you go there in the blue letter, give him the strong number. Well, you ain't gotta read the lexicon part, but you can read the rule part. But what I want you to do is show the lexicon part where it's talking about the word in the college. Alright, let's uh, want, want the Strong's number. Yeah. Strong's H779. Well, read the definition. Read the definition. Well, what I'm saying is you ain't gotta read the lexicon. Show them the lexicon. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So they can read it. Okay. Go ahead. So, it says, uh, 
Shoof. And it says uh, to bruise, crush, grape upon, desire, cease, strike out, to fall upon, bruise. So when you look at the lexicon down there, and it mentions Genesis 3 and 15, when you read that, it says, not of the seed of man, which that's a lie, because Yahweh Shai comes out of uh, the lineage of King David, okay, through Joseph, okay, but the key is that seed, okay, is dealing with the nation of Israel, but who comes out of the nation of Israel? Yahweh Shai. So it's telling you right there, Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to uh, seize or grab, you know, or pull down uh, the serpent, which is Esau Edom, man. That's all I wanted out of there, bro. Okay. So read that again. All right, this is Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Go ahead. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy concep conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Yep. Go ahead. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Yep. Knowing good, good and bad. Took on the philosophy. Now you know bad. Okay. Go ahead. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the day of thy life. So that's what we're looking for, man. To get out of these bodies which are cursed and to not have to work, man. What I want to do is go to uh, Second Ezra. Oh, what you got right there, bro? What I want to do is go to Second Ezra, chapter two. This is uh, 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, verse 10. Thus said the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would, which I would have given unto Israel. Go ahead. Their glory also will I take unto me, and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. See that? Go ahead. They shall have the tree of life for an anointment. Ornament. Or, ornament, Salaki. They shall have the tree of life for an ornament of sweet savor. Mm -hmm. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Uh oh. What does labor have to do with work? Right. So it said, so it said, Salaki, so it said, there, sh there, they, they shall neither labor nor nor be weary so we ain't gonna work or be tired see that so going back to that curse 
and being in these bodies, we want to be delivered from this. To where we be tired, to where we be tired and have to labor, we want to be delivered from that, man. Okay. So the scriptures are saying, look, when we get the kingdom, we ain't going to even go through that. Go ahead, bro. So verse 11. Their glory. Uh, so like, verse 13. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for few days unto you that they may be shortened. Uh oh. Go ahead. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. See? Now what I want you to do is. Jump to verse 28. Okay. This is uh Oh, oh. Start at 27. Okay. This is uh 2 Ezra chapter 2 verse 27. Be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. Go ahead. The heathen shall envy thee. But they shall be able they shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Lord. <laughs> Bottom line, that's all I wanted out of that. So drop that, go to Genesis, back to Genesis 3. And uh what is it, 17? This is uh Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Go ahead. Thorns also, and... Uh, Rise. This one. This one. It's so Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. Thorns also, and thistles, shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field go ahead and the sweet of thy sweat so like it. and the sweat this is uh genesis chapter 3 verse 19 and the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread so since then we was cursed okay the work but in the kingdom we ain't gonna be we ain't gonna labor or be weary we ain't gonna be tired or work Go ahead. Till thou return unto the ground. See? So, pursuing the Genesis uh, 3 and uh, was it 18? Uh, this is verse 19. Verse 19, that's a curse to what we got to work, man. The children of Israel, man. That curse go all the way back to uh, the Adamites, man. So, when you read... Uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, which we're gonna go back to that, we'll finish that off. Okay. And I'm gonna show you. Go back. Go ahead. Right. It says, uh, uh, till till thou return it unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for thus out thou out, for thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. Yeah. So Jake, according to that curse. Jake have to work until they die, man. Labor until they die, man, in order to survive, man. But in the kingdom of heaven, we ain't gonna have to labor or, or be weary. We're gonna have slaves and servants, man. See that? So going back to uh, Romans chapter 8, verse uh, start at uh, 20. All right. This is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him whom how who hath subjected the same in hope. So while we are in this flesh, man, we gotta work, man. And live and live in this sinful nature, man. Because of the curse, man. Go all the way back to uh the Adamites, man. See that? Go all the way back there, man. So here it is in Romans, you got Israel waking up to this truth and 
uh, anxious for Yahweh Bashem Shai to deliver us out of this nature of sin, man. So we don't have to work no more, man. And have plenty. And have slaves, man. See? So that's why there was asking Yahweh Shai in the book of Acts. Are you going to set up the kingdom of heaven at this time for Israel? Because they knew. Because they was talking about the kingdom. They knew, man. They wanted Yahweh Shah to overthrow the Romans at that time, man. Which were Edomites. And here we are again in the uttermost parts of the earth when you read Acts the first chapter prophesying again all over again good, and guess good. what we doing hasting the day for you all shot to come back man. Good, so good. he can overthrow these romans man with good. esau eater man good. all good. over again because we know that the kingdom of heaven is better for us good. but it's going to be hell on earth for them these heathens man and then the scripture side then the then the scripture say they shall envy but not be able to do nothing yeah man we read in 2nd Ezra. We just read it in a punch. See? Yeah. My battery tried to go dead. Let me 